Let's consider the following version of a gambler's ruin problem, where we have a player starting in some position right here, and then we keep on rolling a fair die at each step, such that if we roll 1 through 4, we move one step closer to the ruin right here, whereas if we roll 5 or 6, then we move one step closer to this smiley face, where when we get there, maybe we get some sort of huge prize. And a natural question to ask in the setting is what is the probability of getting ruined here? So here the game continues until we either get ruined or we hit this smiley face and we're trying to find just the probability of ruin. And among many different possible solutions to this problem, I want to present the two that I find really fancy and maybe you haven't seen before. And the, the first approach is going to use Martingale. And the second approach is going to use electric networks. So this is, say, a circuit with resistors and batteries and whatever. Uh, and it turns out there is a very close connection between certain electric quantities and probabilistic quantities when you consider random walk on the network. And we will talk about this pretty soon. But let us first begin with the Martingale approach. Here I try to give some motivation, but I will not be super rigorous with all the detail. And I highly recommend you check out the reference of Duret's Probability Theory and Examples book, especially section 4.8, for a fully rigorous explanation for those of you that know more probability theory. Having said that, let's dive into the solution. First, I just want to set up some notations. So here, let's just label these uh, states as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 is the starting position, 7, 8, 9. And I guess 10 is the smiley face, 0 is the ruin. And how does the random walk proceed? Well, the random walk starts by initial position or initial state of 6, no randomness here. But after that, say starting at S1, there is some randomness. And you keep on adding some X1, then X2, and so on where these, these numbers are determined based on rolling a fair die. So each xi, so when I look at this x1, x2 here, these are iid, and we either add plus 1, moving closer to this smiley face, or we subtract minus 1, moving closer to the ruin. So each one of these can take on the values plus or minus 1, where the probability of getting plus 1, which is one step closer to the smiley face is, is with probability one third because you have to get five or six when you roll a fair die. And these one through four, this means you move negative one in your shifting position. And this happens with probability two thirds. And let's call this one third probability to be P and this two thirds probability to be Q. So P plus Q is one here. And now a key insight to make, which is probably implicit in Duret's uh, approach to this is to realize that when I consider q over p to any, any of these xi's, so maybe xn, and I take the expectation, then we just get 1. This is for the very simple reason that xn is 1, so xn is 1 with probability p, and xn is minus 1 with probability q. When xn is minus 1, then you have q over p raised to minus 1, which is just p over q, and then you multiply that by probability of getting minus 1, which is q, and this is exactly p plus q, which is 1. So once we know the expectation of this thing is 1, a martingale sort of approach uh, is to consider multiplying a bunch of these terms as n varies from 1, 2, 3, and so on. As we keep on multiplying these uh, cumulatively, the expectation of each one is 1, xn's are independent, so we get some sort of sequence where the expectation of a term conditioned on the previous term is exactly the previous term. So uh, to be more precise, consider the sequence q over p to the s0. So remember s0 is the initial position of 6 in our example. And then, and then consider q over p to the s1, q over p to the s2, and so on. And here, thanks to, thanks to this observation, well, you can check that when we take the expectation of one of these terms, say q over p to the s n, where we condition on the previous term in the sequence, then we just recover the previous term simply because how do we go from s n minus 1 to s n? Well, we just do it by adding, adding this x n. And we know 
xn is independent of all the positions that came before. We know the expectation of this thing is 1. So when you take this conditional expectation, it's not too hard to check that we in fact just get the previous term in the sequence. And these sort of sequences where we have these sort of conditioning property is called a martingale. And for a martingale, there is a very well-known theorem called the optional stopping theorem, which is quite useful for situations like the one we have, where there is a natural choice of what's called a stopping time. To explain what I mean, uh, note that these indices here really refer to time step because S1 is where the random walk is at, at time 1, and so on. So a natural choice of the time, so for optional stopping, this is called a stopping time t, is to consider the first time when we hit either ruin or this smiley face. And the key observation to make here is what really is S sub t? So what's the position at the stopping time? Well, this is either going to be 0, so that's for the ruin, or 10 for the smiley face, where this thing happens with the probability of ruin, and 10 happens with probability 1 minus probability of ruin. Now I guess there is technically something to justify here that we cannot have some weird random walk where we move something like this, maybe we get to 2, we go to 7, and then maybe you just do something like this, where we never get to 0, never get to 10. Okay, is, is this possible? Well, this actually happens with probability 0, so we don't have to worry about this. And that's simply because uh, whenever I'm in the interior of, of, this, of this game board, say, there is a positive probability of getting to ruin. Like, wherever I am, just by getting negative 1, like, maybe like 9 times in a row uh, or something like that, we, we get to ruin. And that's with positive probability. So if we are always staying inside somehow, infinitely, a, in sequence, and each time there is a positive probability of going out the board, then it is just going to happen eventually, right? So using that sort of reasoning, which you can easily formalize if for those of you that know probability, um, you know we are either going to be ruined or smiley face, so, uh, so this is fine. And now the optional stopping theorem kicks in, and for actually checking that a certain hypothesis of optional stopping theorem is satisfied, I again refer you to Duret. And But the essential idea is that in some nice scenarios, this martingale property ensures that when I take the expectation of, of this martingale, so of this q over p to s at the stopping time at s sub t, then we actually get the expectation of the very first step, S0. A rough intuition is that in a martingale, when I take the condition, conditional expectation of some position or condition on the previous one, then it, it's, it's just the previous one. That, that already gave you the perfect information of what to expect uh, if we only condition on the very previous step. So when I'm taking the expectation at some future time, then the expectation is actually the expectation we actually started with. So that's what optional stopping theorem tells you is true for a stopping time. And now, uh, now this is easy to finish because we know our initial position is 6. S0 is 6. So the right hand side here is just q over p to the 6th power. And let me actually use a notation r for q over p. And remember q was 1 third or was it 2 thirds? Let me just go back up and check. So q here. Uh, was two-thirds, p was one-third, so going back down. So r is two-thirds over one-third or just two, but really just notationally, this is r to the sixth power. What about the left-hand side? Well, knowing this information that we just wrote down, we know this is q over p to the zeroth power with probability of ruin, plus q over p to the tenth power times one minus probability of ruin. And I guess I, I probably should have used the notation r here. So this is probability of ruin plus r to the tenth, 1 minus probability of ruin. And now we know this thing is equal to this thing. And from here, it's just, it's just basic algebra exercise to check the probability of ruin is in fact r to the tenth minus r to the sixth over r to the tenth minus 1, which you can plug in 2 equals to r to check that this is roughly this is roughly 0 0.938
And that concludes the Martingale approach, which is very slick. The, the key clever insight is to consider, consider this, this sequence of a Martingale. I guess something I should mention here is that things break down here when p equals to q, because when p is q, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1. So we, we have a trivial uh, sequence here. And in, in fact, like we, we cannot even divide by r to the tenth minus 1, because r would be 1 here. So in that case, we just have to pick a different martingale. And in the case that p equals to q, which is p equals q equals to 1 half, here xn has expectation 0. So you can actually just use s0, s1, s2, and this is a martingale, and you can, you can derive a similar conclusion using this. I'll leave that up to you. Now, I want to talk about the second approach using the electric networks now. Here's how this approach is going to go. I'm going to consider a circuit. So here again, uh, this is the state for ruin. And let's, let me draw the state for the smiley face. And we have a bunch of states in between, 1 through 9. And now what I'm going to think about is that these, these segments here, all of these edges, are actually resistors. So I'm going to draw this resistance symbol. Actually, it's been a while since I did physics, so I'm not... I, I've forgotten how to draw them, but it looks something like this. And here, I guess, the key thing I should have drawn is the starting position. So this is the starting position of 6 here. And for this argument to work, for the, for the reason I'll explain pretty soon, we have to consider this part, the left part of the circuit, separately from the right part of the circuit. So we have to consider ruin to start and start to smiley face separately. So let me actually first focus on this part and copy it down. Now, for the reason I'll explain pretty soon, we will give these wires certain resistances. So, I mean, I, I should specify a resistance if I'm working with resistors. And these are going to be as follows. Let's give it 1 here, and then resist resistance of q over p, then q over p squared, then q over p cubed, q over p to the fourth, and finally q over p to the fifth. And let me also write down the conductance, which is just the reciprocal of the resistance. And those are going to be 1 p over q, p over q squared, all the way to p over q to the fifth. And you might be very confused on why I'm doing any of this. And the reason for this is that, first of all, there's a natural way to associate a random walk on an electric network like this. And here's how it goes. So say we, we are at some position. Maybe we're at position 4 right now or any position. And here, I guess we only have two re resistors going out. But generally, so if you're at some position, generally, maybe this is a different problem and you can have many different wires that's going out. And maybe these have conductance C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5. So here, I guess, we, we really only have two conductances, but it, this is a general case. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we follow, we follow this wire with conductance C1 with probability C1 divided by sum of all Ci's. And similarly for C2 and so on. This is sort of intuitive because if a conductance is very large, maybe it's really easy for the current to flow along this wire. So you want to follow the wire with very high probability. So I guess that's a rough intuition. And now that should explain why I chose conductances to be these or why I chose resistance to be these because they are in the ratio 1 to p over q. And this ratio 1 to p over q is exactly the same as the ratio q to p, which means given at any point following, following the, this sort of interpretation, there's a probability q of going left, probability p of going right. And that's exactly, that's exactly the setup we had before. And now, once we have an electric network, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to install a battery. So we install a battery. Maybe this is plus, this is minus. I, I can't remember which one's which. But the, the main thing is now this is going to induce some sort of current. So we're going to have some current that's flowing through the circuit. When I zoom in into this ruin, then and we look at the flow, the current flow, going from ruin to other vertices. So there is going to be a certain amount of current, say this, let's call it current I, that's flowing out of ruin. And you, you can check, uh, this is really elementary electrostatics, I suppose, that the current is actually the same as the current going in, current going in, into this, into this start position. And not only that, uh, because we 
because this battery induces some voltage, some potential difference V between the ruin and start, uh, what we have because of Ohm's law is that we have this, this quantity called the effective resistance, where when I multiply by current, I should get the voltage. And this physical quantity actually has a probabilistic connection. But before I continue, I do want to give a reference for these network and random walk theory. And that is the book by Levin and Perez. They have a fantastic book called Markov Chain and Mixing Times. And I highly encourage you to check out, I think it's, let me see, it, it's I think chapter 9 of the book. And it references it for the actual mathematical theory with all the proofs. But the key equation, key equation I want to point out is, is this, is that uh, this is a key result. When I start at the starting vertex, and then I look at the probability of getting to ruin before returning to start, this turns out to be 1 over the conductance associated with the start. This is the sum of conductances of all the wires coming out of start. So if this is start, and then I have a bunch of conductances coming out of start, then C of start will be just sum of CI. But here we only have we only have one wire going out of start, so that's just the conductance of that wire, but times the effective resistance, the effective resistance between start and ruin. This is clearly an amazing theorem, and for the actual proof, again, I refer you to Levin and Perez, but to just get some intuition, um, let's think about what should happen if the effective resistance goes up. Well, how can that happen? Well, imagine a setting where we just have a lot more resistances here. So rather than having like, uh, I think here we have six resistors, maybe we have this sort of pattern, but we actually have 10 resistors. If you know, if you know physics, then you know that should increase the resistance between the two points. So effective resistance goes up. And since we have more edges that we have to travel to go from start to ruin, intuitively this probability should go down, which checks out with, uh, with the fact we're dividing by effective resistance. Another thing you can think about is we are dividing by this conductance at the start. And certainly if the conductance of this edge increases, then it's pretty easy for us to bounce right back to start, right? We, we go away from start and then it's uh, due to high conductance, we can go right back with high probability. So that again should lower the probability of ruin, uh, which also checks out. We can also think about putting some factor of k here for the conductances. In the case, we still get the same random walk because the ratio is still, still q to p between the two consecutive edges. So this probability stays the same. So does the right hand side stay the same? And yes, it does because conductance gets multiplied by k, but the resistance, because it's inverse of conductance, should now be multiplied by 1 over k. So all I'm saying is things check out. So now let's actually do the calculation. And the key thing, uh, I guess the conductance at the start is easy to find. It's p over q to the fifth, which is r to the negative 5, where r is q over p, if you remember. What about the effective resistance? Well, the, the thing to realize here is that we have a series connection between ruin and start. So we can actually make a huge reduction where we just have one resistance, one resistor, and we just add up the resistances. So this is just one plus R plus all the way to R to the fifth. This is from physics, and this just gets you the effective resistance between the two points right away. So this is effective resistance. Again, just think of it as intuitively if you're since we're not going through all the rigorous definitions, is this quantity 1 plus r plus all the way to r to the fifth. So that takes care of this probability. We should also analyze the right hand side of the circuit where we just focus on everything happening between start and the smiley face. So let's consider that. So we again have start, which is 6. We have smiley face, which is 10. So we have three states in between. And again, for the resistance, we can have 1 r r squared r cubed. And now uh, in this setting, if we start at start and we consider the probability of getting to smiley face before returning to start using the same formula, it's 1 over the conductance of start, but now that's just 1, 1 over the resistance, 1 over 1. And the effective resistance now is 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed. So why is any of this helpful? Well, what do we actually want to find? 
we want to find, so we have this setting where we have, this is, this is ruin, this is start, this is smiley face. And what we actually want is the probability of getting to ruin before smiley face, where we start as start, right? And here's how we can think about it. So say, say we run the simulation and then we say start by going left. So with probability Q say, and then we just happen to walk like this and we just go back to start. In that case, just discard, just disregard the simulation. And because I mean, it's basically just resetting it. And then we just do it again. So let's say I run it and then I say I start by going right, but this time we again bounce back. Again, just disregard that. The only simulations that actually matter or when we choose a direction, say we go towards ruin and we actually, we actually get there, right? We, without returning to start or we get to smiley face without returning to start. That, those are the only cases that actually matter. So uh, what I'm saying here is that since with probability Q, we start by going left and with probability P, we start by going right. Uh, the, the probability that we actually care about is Q. So we, we try going left with probability Q and then we actually get there without returning to start, which is this probability. Let's give it a name. Let's call this X. We can call this Y. So this is like X times Q, but this is out of the total probability where we don't come back to start. So this is Q times X, or if we started with probability P going right, this would be P times Y. So we see that this is actually, this is actually the probability we care about. This is the P of ruin we were trying to find before. And from here, it's just a matter of tenacious calculation to finish. I'm not going to go through all the detail because you have everything you need here. See, you see that X and Y are completely in terms of R. We know R equals to two, so we can, we can just find this. And notice that even if Q equals to P, what we can do is that in the case R is one and everything is fine. We can just plug in R equals to one and then work with these expressions. Um, but if not, we can actually use the geometric series sum formula to uh, simplify these two when R is not one. And that's, that's going to be enough for you to, uh, if you, if you like to try, you can sit down and calculate this and you should be able to see that this is once again, R to the 10th minus R to the six all divided by R to the 10th minus one. For anyone that actually wants to do the calculation, one trick I suggest you use is divide by P to both sides and P's cancel out here and Q over P now becomes R. So now oh, you only have to worry about R, you don't have to worry about P and Q. So that's how, that's one way to facilitate the calculation. And once again, we get, we get the sensor, which let me just quickly recap is 0 0.938. So we, we saw two approaches, one using Martingale, one using electric network. And I hope this gave you some new insight on the problem that maybe, maybe you haven't seen before. And on that note, I just want to thank you for watching and end the video here.